Well, a titanic top of the table clash at the SCG to kick off round 17. A belting at a gabber, bereft of people to finish it, and no shortage of action in between. Let's cut to the crux of all the goings on in hot or not. We've got no monitor, guys. All right, Finey, uh, you're up first today. I'm going to kick it off with a game saint, part of the leadership group, by the name of Jaron Geary. Yes, very and impressive. Jaron Geary is a great contested ball winner. Had a fantastic game, near best on ground against the Demons, but he's not a noted goal kicker. Well, he's kicked his first goal for the season, as we see on our screens, with a minute 13 to go on the clock. Now, he's a man who hadn't kicked a goal all season, has never kicked more than one goal in 136 games of football, and had only kicked five goals in his last 60 games of football. After kicking a goal with a minute to go in the quarter, what did he do? With 30 seconds to go in the quarter, kicked his second, first time he's ever had multiple goals. Well done, Jaron. He's very solid for him, isn't he? Like, I've always found him a hard player to sort of say anything definitively about. What's his greatest asset, do you reckon? C c competitiveness. Competed ball. He's statistically St Kilda's best player at winning contested ball. So he's very good one-on-one. -on -one. He's a really good, um, tough opponent for a small to mid-sized forward. But his kicking has been his problem. On the weekend, he, like the Saints, got things going after quarter time. It was a really entertaining game of footy, and Geary was key. He did something very funny in the last quarter. He went to spoil. He went to sort of double punch a ball, and he sort of got trapped between his two fists, and he marked it. <laughs> he had a good day. All right, I'll see you a Geary and raise you a Dustin Martin. Now, Richmond were pretty ordinary in, in beating the Bombers on the weekend. But this guy was far from ordinary. 43 disposals, two goals, 14 clearances, 10 votes in the coach's award, the maximum from either coach. Unfortunately, Mark McClure just couldn't squeeze him in for a three or a two or one. Or one of the stupidest examples of uh, making a point for the sake of it. I, I've I, ever I, seen. Know, I know the point he was making, and I think it's a valid point. Well, hang on, not in the case of Dustin Martin, but. Possessions per se are not the be all and end all. In fact, in the Sydney Hawthorne game, the leading possession winners on the ground, uh, there were four, four guys who had over 30, and I thought clearly the best three players were Gary Rowan, 12 possessions, um, uh, Cyril Rioli, 17 possessions, and Sean Burgoyne, 23. None of them in the top 10 possessions. Yeah, well, the, the quote ground. was he had 33 chip kicks that went two yards in the back half. Well, I don't know how you do that and end up with 585 metres going, which was the most on the ground. So well, is it, well, his other two kicks went 190 <sighs> metres. Well, out. exactly. We, we get the grumpy old man stick sellers, but, you know, a bit over the top. Anyway, quick, your second one. Uh, my second one is a not. The, the decision against Michael Ferrito, now, it was... How that can be rationalised by the umpiring review as the correct decision, it is just... Look, if it's correct, then there have been 300 decisions this season that are incorrect. It, there has to be some level of precedence. We know they've tightened up on intentional um, rush behinds, but this guy is under clear pressure. He's been tackled almost to his knees, that is a rushed behind, and don't rationalise it on a Monday, please, guys. Well, quick point, D. I had a look at the wording of the rule. It actually doesn't make any reference to pressure whatsoever. No. So they can technically pay that, but, yeah, there's 300 before that they should have paid this season. So but Michael Ferrito, what he did then was an instinctive act based on what he knows AFL football to be umpired, at what you know, the margins for tolerance in AFL football. He doesn't go there with the piece of paper that states the rule. He only knows what he's seen in a very long and storied career. Yeah, consistency is the uh, object of the exercise, I would have thought. OK, a not for me next, and it's Brisbane. Uh, can things get any worse for the Lions? Well, just when you think they can't, they do. Last game of the round up at the Gabba. Have a look at the absolutely vacant seats in the background there and colouring them doesn't help that much boys. The crowd was 10,195 pissing rain for most of the second half and uh, to be a bit rude it pissed down goals as well. It's 10 goals to the Giants in the second quarter with nary a bit of opposition defence in sight. It was abject and uh, they are down at the mouth as a team and as a club. And um, things are looking as dark as probably 
back to the bad old days of the Brisbane Bears. And I think we'll be the only football show this week in which the word nary is used. Well done. <laughs> okay, I'll try and use it a couple more times yet. Okay, your last one. Well, if they if, look, Brisbane are as not hot as humanly possible, but they've got a kid called Reese Matheson. He's a promising footballer. He actually had a pretty good game, but I hate political correctness. And he turned back the hands of time to Mark Williams' goal celebration. Now, have a look what he does. Kicks the goal. Bang! Up in the grandstand. Mark Williams for Hawthorne got in trouble for it. Reese probably was six years old at the time or something, but good on you, son. You're going to get somebody on Twitter or somebody on social media saying, don't you realise that guns kill? Yeah. Do what you want, Reese. Good celebration. Now, I know I'm, I am pretty PC, but I don't have an issue with that at all. I think you'd have to be working pretty hard to... And there was nobody in the stand, so he didn't shoot anybody. He didn't he shoot just, anyone. He shot one of those seats you don't Unlike like. Adam Goods with his imaginary spear. Um, OK, let's finish off with a hot for me, and it's Orazio Fantasia, or Disney, as he's rapidly becoming known to Essendon people. Another rising star nomination this week. Got one last year as well. He has been, there's been plenty of pluses in a year in which his side's only won one game, and he's right up the top of the list, I reckon. He's quick, uh, he's, he's got good skills, he pre- he's prepared to back himself, which I think is really important in a young player. Not short of courage, as we saw there, put his body in position to take a, a mark and get crashed. Burns his opponent off here with a bit of speed. He's been a gun for him, and he's spent a bit of time up forward, but he will spend more and more time on the ball, I think. He's going to be a long-termer for him, make no mistake. Really good player. Uh, had to work hard to get onto an AFL list and keep his spot there. He's been played a lot up forward this year because he is a good goal kicker. And I think Westfold's probably done the right thing. When Essendon get all their players back, he'll be a very handy forward midfielder. You're spot on. Go Disney. Mm. So I had to go straight into women's football. Yeah. So now you look at it, there's you know youth girls teams everywhere and, and everybody like my local team told me that they're getting women's a uh, girls team next year. So it's just growing it's just growing so so quick and it's exciting I think for, for women's football.